Hello, 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 and welcome, welcome to another episode of the Least Defend podcast, uh, where we discuss some of the ongoing topics surrounding rental property and property management. Um, today, I am going to do a topic on um, something that I've learned in my career probably in the last seven or eight years, and it made a profound difference in how I run my uh, property management and rental business. And uh, that is, why would you not rent to own property? Um, that's a question that I'm posing to you as the listener. Uh, if you're a currently renting property, especially if you are renting single family property. Now, if you're renting two flats, three flats, uh, multi-unit properties, then this might not apply to you. But in the end, if you deal in any single family property or if you've ever held some single family property uh, for rental, I want to know why would you not do rent to own uh, versus just doing a standard rental? The only reason that I personally can come up with that I would do a rental over a rent to own is that my 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 goal with that property is not to make money. Um, or at least make the most money on my dollar that I can. Um, when you're dealing with rental property, you're actually leveraging the money that you've invested and the money that you're borrowing to get a return on that money. And I know the way I invest, I always want to get the maximum amount of return that I can on that money um, because it only makes sense. My money should work as hard as it possibly can for me. And so... What I'm thinking is I thought I would issue some or talk about some of the pros and cons of doing rent to own uh, properties, selling properties rent to own versus renting them just strictly as rental. And this is specifically meant for those people that bought into rental property as a way to make some supplemental or additional income, or maybe your rental property is your primary business. And you think to yourself, well, I've put together this portfolio of 15, 20, 30, 50 properties, why would I ever want to sell them? I'm going to talk about some of the pros and cons to why you should structure your business rent to own. Um, and if you have disagreements, then I'd, I'd like to hear them in the uh, comments and I'll respond. But I've gone through this for several years and this is what I've come up with as the best and worst reasons to look at rent to own, rent to own uh, rentals versus just renting a house. So I'm going to first talk about the pros to or the, the, the benefits to renting to own. Now, for those of you that don't know, renting to own is when you're renting to a person or a family and they have the option or the right to buy that property. Um, when it's set up right, there are a lot of benefits to you as the landlord and there are benefits to the tenant uh, with rent to own. And so I'm going to discuss some of those pros to you as a landlord. Remember, this is only from the side of the landlord. So one of the first and the biggest benefits to me uh, is that when you're renting to own, oftentimes you will get better tenants. And the reason I say that you'll get better tenants is because nothing will make a good tenant like their intentions. The best, the best factor that gives you a successful tenant is their intentions. If a tenant is has the intention of trying to swindle you out of your property or trying to swindle every dollar they can or every every you know thing they can out of you uh, for the landlord, then they're not their intentions are to get everything they can. So all of their actions are going to follow their intentions and they're going to do things that are meant to get them to lose money for you and and make money or make benefits for them but when you have a rent to own tenant that tenant is looking at the property as if they want to buy that property they are planning on buying that property so their intentions are to maintain or improve that property as well as to satisfy you uh, so that they can ultimately become an owner and so that's one of the biggest benefits that you get better tenants. Their intentions on what they're uh, what they're trying to do with the property are better. Those intentions are followed by their actions. The actions that they take in your property are better. They're better, more beneficial to you because they want to own that property. Another pro with uh, rent to own is that you get more income sources when you set up a rent to own property the right way you get much more income sources than you do from a typical rental. Let's compare the two. 
when I'm doing a typical rental, I get us I get an application fee. Maybe if if you do a background check, you might get an application fee. Let's say that's fifty dollars. Then you get a security deposit. That's not really an income. That's really just a deposit because in most states, there are very strict laws on what you can do with that money if you have a security deposit from a tenant. Uh, so that's not really an income. Then you get the monthly rent. Now, the monthly rent is whatever you get minus the mortgage and the taxes and the insurance, P-I-T-I. That's principal interest, taxes, and insurance for those of you that don't know. You get the difference between what the property has to be, what it has to pay, what you have to pay every month and what the tenant pays you. Uh, so that's a profit center. Then you get, when they move out of the property, you get nothing. You Hopefully they've maintained your property. You get the property back in good shape. And then you either clean up or do some improvements and then you rent it back out to another person. That's what you're looking at with the rental. Now let's compare with the rent to own. So with the rent to own, I typically, me personally, don't charge an application fee. I have no need to. I make enough money in the other options. But let's say you charge an application fee for your rent to own. So that's, you know, whatever profit you can get from that. Then you've got uh, the option deposit or down payment. Now, what's different with a security deposit and an option deposit, I call mine an, an uh, NROC, non-refundable option consideration. Uh, and I learned that from Charlie, Charlie and Randy France from years ago, but they uh, were instrumental in teaching me this technique. So my down payment or NROC, my non-refundable option consideration, is the money that a tenant pays me for the right to buy the house. They're paying me for the right to get an option to buy that house. Now, my down payment or my NROC typically runs anywhere. I'm in Illinois, so my properties run about anywhere from Seventy-five thousand to one hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars, sometimes more, but in the average of about seventy-five thousand to one hundred and fifty thousand. My NROC that I get down, which is non-refundable, so it's all my money. It doesn't go to any security deposit. Is typically on the low end for a property that needs a lot of work that they're going to do the work on. Is thirty-five hundred. The average is about fifty-five hundred, and I've gotten down payments as high as thirty thousand dollars on one of my rent-to-own properties. Um, and this is non-refundable money. So the moment I got it, it was mine to spend. And, uh, so that's one income stream. I also have, uh, the income stream of the monthly payment, the same as a rental. Um, the money that I get to keep after the taxes, the insurance, the mortgage are paid. And then as a third income source or a fourth, if you got an application, uh, fee, I get the profit that I make when they buy the property because I figured in the price that they were buying the property for at the beginning of their lease. And when they buy the property, I get the profit from that. And then I take that profit and I can reinvest it into a new property or I can keep it for myself or whatever I choose to do with it. So I've got three rather large or at least two and two rather large uh, income sources as well as the regular rental income source that a regular landlord gets um, compared to just a rental. So the income sources are greater and you can you have more flexibility with them. Another benefit of rent to own is that it's less maintenance. There's less work that I have to do on the property because when I do my rent to own, the property is as is condition. So they're expected to maintain the property. And in many cases, my tenants improve the property. I've done I've done tons of rent to owns where a tenant went in and said, you know what? We knew we were buying this house. So we put in new windows or we knew we were buying this house. So we refinished the wood floors or we knew we were buying this house. So we redid the bathroom and the kitchen and we put money into the house. So oftentimes I will get a house if my tenant does not buy the house. I will oftentimes get a house back in better condition then I gave it to the tenant, which is a benefit for me. So they're actually improving my investment. And this is not, I want to be clear, this is not a shady way to do business or anything like that because my ultimate goal and what I do set my tenants up with is to be successful buying the property. If they buy the property, I don't get the benefit of that improvement. They get the benefit of that improvement. But as it stands, if they don't buy the property, then while I don't get the, while, while I didn't get the sale, I do end up getting um, some, you know, added benefit to my property because they improve my property. So that's another benefit of the uh, rent to own because there's less maintenance, less less maintenance for me that I have to spend money on and, and run around for and that kind of thing. Another benefit is there's less turnaround. 
Typically, when a tenant has invested their down payment or option deposit or in rock with me, um, they're invested in that property. The only time they're going to leave that property is if they've had a financial uh, strain that's caused them to not be able to afford the property or they um, could not uh, or they chose to move out because, you know, something in life happened or something like that. But they typically are invested in this property and they will stay there longer. My average uh, rent to own tenant stays in my property for three or four years if they have a lot of credit issues. I try to get them financed and purchase the property within two years. But if I don't, they can stay there longer um, and oftentimes much longer than that if I would allow them to. Uh, because they are invested in this property and look at this property as their own home, which is a benefit to me. And the final uh, benefit to me as with rent to own is that you have a built in exit strategy. You can set the purchase price of what your tenant is buying the house for. You can set how you're going to um, what what they need to do to help them. You can set up how to help them buy the house and help them line up financing. But it's a lot of benefit to you because you have a built in exit strategy. If you think about it. When we become landlords, you don't get into being a landlord so that you can just own a bunch of property and tell people what to do with the property you have. At least you shouldn't get into landlording for that. Your ultimate goal with getting into landlording should be passive income. And rent to own offers you a much greater passive income. Um, and when you sell the property, which is going to be the end goal of any property, if you rent it or if you rent to own, ultimately you're going to sell the property. Um, you might as well structure in how you're selling the property early and then take the money you make from that sale and go buy another property or go invest in something else that might be more lucrative. One of the biggest downfalls of rental property is that it's usually not liquid. You usually can't just say, hey, I've got half a million dollars in equity in my rental property. Let me go pull some of that out and go to lunch tomorrow. Um, real estate doesn't work that way. So you might as well build in some liquidity by um, setting up to have a built-in exit strategy. And that's what rent to own allows you to do. Now, having said that, I'm going to spend a little bit on some of the cons of or the negatives of rent to own. Uh, that I see. And again, if you've got more or something that I'm not mentioning, I'd you know, like you to mention it in the comments because I'd be interested in hearing it. Um, one of the biggest cons that I hear most landlords complain about when I bring up the possibility of rent to own is that you will lose the investment. When you're doing rent to own, nine times, well, if everything goes as plans, you will sell the investment to that tenant. And some people look at it like they don't want to sell the investment. They want to keep the investment because that's why they bought the thing in the first place to make sure they got a residual income. But the way I look at it, go ahead and sell the investment and then buy a new investment with the profit that you made. You can just reinvest your profits the same way you could buy a stock and sell that stock and take the profits and reinvest it in another stock. You can do the same thing with rental property. But that is a, a con or a negative for some people with rent to own. Another negative is you can't usually, and I'm not going to say you can never, but usually you don't get the benefit of using government subsidized tenants. So if you're familiar with the government subsidy programs that are typically called Section 8, um, Section 8 tenants don't usually work well with rent to own because one, they don't have the down payment money typically in place. Two, uh, it's very hard to set them up to try to purchase a property. Um, and three, a lot of times their motivation is they're not looking to purchase a property. They're looking to live on subsidized housing until they're on their feet. Um, and so with that being the case, typically subsidized housing tenants don't work. And if you're someone who likes subsidized housing tenants, you figure they're uh, less problems, then this might not be the investment type that you want to set up. I, in my experience, I've worked with subsidized housing tenants for years, but um Typically, subsidized housing tenants can be as much work, if not more, than a typical tenant. But to each its own, and I understand some people, they might like uh, subsidized housing tenants. Another uh, con or negative is that you lose out on a certain pool of tenants. In your area, there's a certain number of people at any given time that want to rent property. Some of those people don't want to rent to own. They don't even want to consider buying a house. They just want to rent. And if you're offering your property as a rent to own, then that's a negative to them and they won't even apply to your property. So sometimes in some areas, people say that rent to own doesn't work that well in the area. I have yet to see an area where rent to own did not work exceptionally well, but you would lose that uh, certain 
market of tenants. But at the same time, you could possibly gain a market of tenants that would like to get something more out of their rental than just rent. But you do run the risk of losing those tenants that just want to rent uh, in your market. So that can be a negative. Um, another negative of rent to own is that you have to explain uh, to rent to own tenants what they can and cannot renovate. I had a situation where a tenant, I always explain to my tenants that they can do any improvements to the property that they want as long as it's if, if it's an improvement on a major system like electrical or plumbing, they need to get a licensed contractor to do the improvement. They can't have their cousin who works, you know, in who does electrical on the side do it. They have to get a licensed person. The other thing I explained to my tenants is that they cannot knock down any walls. I had a tenant that um, and I did that from experience. I had a tenant that knocked down I had a three bedroom house and they knocked down a wall to make it a two bedroom house. And the reason they can't do that is because one, they do not own the property yet. Once they own it, they can do whatever they want. But until they own the property fully, they can't knock down walls because when you change a three bedroom house to a two bedroom house, you drastically affect the property value of that property because now it's not a three bedroom home. It's actually a two bedroom home. So I, I do not allow my tenants to do that. But you have to explain that to them. To them so that could be a negative. Um, and then finally, the last negative, I guess, that you can say with rent to own is that you need to help them buy. If you're going to run a legitimate rent to own uh, process for your tenants, your tenants oftentimes will need help getting in position to buy and you need to provide that help to them. Now, that help might be sending them to a lender that's willing to help them. It doesn't have to be you. But if you're going to do good business and you're going to help the tenant as well as the tenants helping you by making payments, you need to set up so that your tenant is getting assistance to get ready to buy. Um, and for some people, that can be kind of a headache. For me personally, I enjoy helping tenants and I, you know, I've helped other landlords set up uh, systems to help their tenants get ready to buy. Um, it's really not that hard, but that is something you need to do if you're going to conduct good business. You want to benefit the tenant as well as yourself. So those are a couple of the cons that I see. But overall, in my opinion, the pros far outweigh the cons when you're doing rent to own. But, you know, like I said, I'd always love to hear your comments or suggestions or thoughts or disagreements with what I'm saying. Uh, if you have questions or comments, please leave them in this, uh, this, the uh, comments section below. And, um, you know, look forward to hearing from you. If you've got questions, please leave a question in the comments below. And until next week, I will talk to you later. This has been Art Veal with the Least Defend Podcast. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. And until next time, have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye.